We've learned about the Batman, his war on crime, and his allies. Gotham was entering a new era, one of hope, one of justice. But what happens when an ally, even a closest friend, becomes an enemy? Bruce Wayne and Harvey Dent were inseparable as young men. They were sons of two very different families, however. The Waynes had their industrial empire, looked upon by Gotham citizens as a necessity to the ever-evolving city. The Dents, on the other hand, were a different story. Harvey's father would often come home drunk, beating both him and his mother. As soon as he was able, he left, having received a scholarship to Gotham University. It was here that he met his roommate, Bruce Wayne, and the two became fast friends. They were both remarkably competitive, and they continually pushed each other to greater and greater achievements, proving an unstoppable team. Harvey soon graduated with a degree in law, having received top marks. He soon became the youngest district attorney in Gotham's history with the help of Bruce and his money. He won the election on the promise that he would help root out corruption in Gotham's justice system, helping restore order in a city in chaos. Soon, World War I began. Harvey saw this as an opportunity to defend his country and return a war hero, even furthering his public standing in Gotham. It was no surprise to the public when Harvey decided to join the war effort, but it was not well received when Bruce decided to join him as well. Many saw it as a rich boy wanting to play hero without realizing what he was getting himself into. Together, Harvey and Bruce fought on the front lines in the Battle of Cambrai, during which Harvey was gravely injured by a bomb, and Bruce vanished entirely, presumed to have been killed in action. During that battle, shrapnel from a bomb injured Harvey and did extensive damage to the left side of his face. He had to be sent home, disgraced in his own mind. Dr. Leslie Tompkins treated him and did her best, but Harvey's new physical appearance had doomed his once blooming political career, and he no longer felt the desire to chase it. His fiancée had left him after seeing his new appearance, his best friend was missing, presumed dead, and with nowhere left to turn, he went back to his father to ask for help. He hid his injuries with a tin mask that covered the left side of his face. And he went into seclusion in his family home, not showing himself to the public. The public perception of him began to fade, but something festered within Harvey, burning to get out. In the following years, Harvey sank into a depression. This culminated when Bruce returned home, bearing a tale of being captured by enemy forces and carrying the scars to prove it. Harvey never believed him, feeling betrayed by his friend, rather than relieved that he had survived. Eventually, his mind could no longer take the strain, and he snapped. His depression turned into hatred for the world around him, and he no longer wore his tin mask. He shone his face proudly for all to see, spiraling full on into his duality. He would lash out almost as if he was another person. Many years later, after his death, he would be diagnosed as having had dissociative identity disorder. Harvey had always had a dark side, even before his disfigurement. It stemmed from his hatred towards his father, and it was almost as if his scarred face gave physical form to his disembodied rage. It grew so strong that it manifested as a second identity, calling himself Two-Face. Over time, his behavior grew more and more erratic, Two-Face becoming the dominant of the two personalities. Two-Face began his criminal career soon after, gaining the fear of both citizens and criminals alike due to his sadistic nature. His duality continued to increase in many ways. His suit split down the middle in two different styles, his silver dollar which he flipped to make his decisions. He was becoming unpredictably deadly. Bruce always held out the hope that his friend Harvey was still within Two-Face somewhere. No matter how much his friend sank, he always tried to extend his hand 
to help the district attorney turned criminal. He felt guilty and personally responsible for his friend's condition due to his focus on fighting crime as the Batman. Two-Face committed many crimes, and the Batman was always there to stop him, sometimes with the aid of an ally or two. But his criminal career came to a screeching halt after one fateful day. During a battle with the newest supervillain to appear in Gotham, Bane, the Batman's back was broken. He disappeared, and a new Batman emerged to take his place. This new Batman had alleged ties to the cult known as the Order of St. Dumas, and it soon became apparent that he had no qualms about brutalizing and murdering the criminals he came into conflict with. Two-Face, woefully unaware of the deadly tactics of this new Batman, went about business as usual, and when the new Batman arrived on the scene, found himself unprepared. The new Batman viciously murdered the former district attorney. The remaining allies of the original Batman were powerless to stop him. Harvey Dent's story was one of horror and tragedy from beginning to end. He was powerless at the hands of his father, powerless at the hands of World War I, and powerless to stop his mind from betraying him. So what became of him after death? Harvey Dent's body was recovered by the police, and his features were even more unrecognizable due to the damage done by the new Batman. A death mask was constructed to place on Harvey's body, though it was not a recreation of how his face had been before the war, it was a recreation of what he had looked like as Two-Face. To some it seemed tasteless, but to others it seemed fitting. Harvey Dent had been a positive force in Gotham, but Two-Face had been a scourge. Many objected to the funeral being held at the city hall, but it transpired nonetheless. The Batman always carried the guilt of his friend's downward spiral, and always felt the weight of his death. Gotham will never forget Harvey Dent, as he was a perfect example of the city's own duality, the light of hope in its citizens, and the darkness of evil in its criminal element.